You see down here, there's oil along here. I'm pretty sure the front main seal is bad. And uh, I plan on replacing the timing belt too. It's about due for it. So my technique of doing it, I prefer to pull the radiator. I need to pull this radiator anyway because I, I want to put a, a newer radiator in here. Use this on another car. <clears throat> so pull the radiator, remove the front grill, and the fan. That way I can get out the bolt. It's on the end of this pulley. So I'm going to start removing that stuff kind of elevated the car up. It's easier to work when you're up high like that. <clears throat> it's easier on the back. And plus I can get a bucket under here to drain the radiator fluid. I usually just drain it into a bucket. And I reuse it. But when I reuse it I filter it through cheesecloth. Get any uh, debris out of it. Radiator off. 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter. Remove this hose. My grill is wired in. There's a, there's a little clip here. You just kind of lift up on the little thing there and pull, and it'll pop out. There's a screw there. I got the top part of the radiator free now. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 10 millimeter. And unplug this and get this out of here. Look at the radiator. I can see there's a lot of pine needles built up. That couldn't couldn't help matters any. Get this loose. Get it out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, it's out of the way enough. I can get up my impact driver in on that pulley bolt there. I need to uh, remove the alternator belt and the power steering. So power steering is a <coughs> remove that one and down in the back here there's a one to loosen up and there's one on the bottom down underneath that you have to loosen. And you can Pull the pump this way, get it out of the way. And I'll be pulling this pulley off. There's three 10 millimeters on it and this cover. Okay, I got the cover off, timing belt cover. And next thing I want to do is you can see the timing mark there. I'll get that lined up over here. And down inside. The gear down in there, there's a mark on the block. I want to line the mark with that gear. And where that hole is, you see this arrow, I want to line those up too. Okay, I threw that hole, I lined it up with the arrow. And down inside there, I lined up that mark on the lower timing belt pulley with the mark on the block there. And this mark out here is lined up on zero. Now if I don't move anything, when I reinstall this, <clears throat> I can put it all back together just the way it was with those marks aligned as long as I don't rotate the shaft down there, you know, get it out of alignment. All I gotta do is move it back a little if I do. <clears throat> but as long as you don't rotate this like a full 360 degrees, that would put it, the timing off. So it's all right if it moves back and forth a little bit, get the mark back on there. And that way I won't have to mess with pulling the distributor cap, seeing if everything's lined up. Okay, get this pulley off. I'm going to take this 14 millimeter off. I'm going to loosen this one down here so that this can go back and forth. And it'll make it easier to get it off. And then we got to use the... Uh, I'm going to use my electric torque wrench to get that nut off. Okay, I got the wrench hooked up. It has these the bendable joint extensions. Um, 
on both ends so I can get a pretty good straight shot in there on it. Okay, so the rattle gun didn't work, so I pulled the power steering pulley off. <coughs> I have to use this piece of angle iron. <coughs> I can bolt that to the harmonic balancer and then this will wedge up against the frame and I can use a torque wrench to get it off. Okay, so I put that piece of angle iron on the harmonic balancer, my 19 millimeter on there with the breaker bar. And then down there, I had to put a 2x4 block between the frame so it wouldn't hit the power steering stuff. And then I pulled on this. Boy, it took some pulling too, but it, it broke the nut free. So I'm good to go. Those are the length of bolts that I used to bolt to the harmonic balancer. That notch is for the socket. And you can see the thing is, I'd say 36 inches long would be long enough. But this one's a little longer than it really needs to be. It's 2 by 2 by 8 inch steel angle. Most of the time these harmonic balancers just pull right off, but sometimes they're a little stuck on there. So if you just take a piece of aluminum or steel, drill two holes, 5 16 diameter, a 30 second under 2 and 5 eighths apart. And that'll screw into the two horizontal holes and then I can put a spacer in there. We'll show that in a minute. There it's hooked up. I found a socket. The longest one I had that was just under 15 16 in diameter. And tighten up those two bolts and that pulls the balancer off. If you drill another hole, that one there at two about two inches from the hole, this hole, you can use it in the same manner to pop the steering wheel off. Okay now remove the two bolts that are left holding this plastic shroud on. There's a lot of oil underneath there. I'm pretty sure that seal is leaking. Um, okay, next step. I'm going to get this pulley off. I'm at the bottom. But pull this pulley off now with the belt. Hopefully that bottom pulley will come off easily. I was pretty lucky this pulley come right off. See the mark there. Lines up with this little bump here. Another thing I meant to bring up was that lower timing belt pulley. If it's stuck on there, that same bar that I was using, I drilled two holes in it. The two holes are about two and three eighths apart. And I made up these special little pieces here kind of thin on the end so they'll slip behind between the block and the pulley. And also put that in there to stay in a little bit. And then I put this hose clamp around it to hold it tight while you crank down on these and there would be a spacer in between here, the shaft and this. I usually just use a socket. And you tighten down and it pulls that thing off. shape. It looks like the cam seal was leaking too so I'm going to replace the cam seal also. Uh, usually just pry them out with a screwdriver. Of course it could have been the valve cover gasket that's leaking but as long as I'm in it this far I uh, might as well replace that seal too. Pop the cam seal out with a screwdriver, and it's an original equipment cam seal. It doesn't have any, well, you can just tell. They're, they're brittle, and you push on, on these, they're hard as they're stiff, and they crack if you bend them too far. If it was a new seal, it would have a like national on it or something like that. 
Uh, the lower seal, the main seal, it, it was replaced at one time because it, it says National K324115R, made in Mexico. Uh, maybe it didn't need to be replaced. It was probably just the cam seal that was leaking. But rented this far, might as well replace everything. I put the front seal in. I like to grease up the inside and the the surface that rides on the shaft. So the inside edge of the seal. Grease up the back side where the spring is just to keep the spring from popping out when you install it. And I basically press it in with my fingers as far as I can and then I use this piece of pipe which was a little bit bigger than the seal and I just tapped it with the small hammer to get it in until it was flush. <coughs> Okay, I pushed the upper seal, the cam seal on as far as I could. Then I just took the end of this and I, I just pushed, went around equally all the way around, just pushed until I got flush. Some people like to use non-hardening gasket compound on the outside edges <clears throat> so you get a better seal around here. I've done that before, there's nothing wrong with it. So there's always something. I looked under the water pump, noticed there was water coming out, the wheat pole. So, looks like I gotta replace the water pump too. I think I have a good used one laying around somewhere. Okay, since I found uh, the water pump was leaking out the wheat pole on the bottom, I released the drain to so drain the block of water. I'm gonna have to pull the water pump off. And I was out messing around here and looking at my stuff and having looks like a fairly new water pump. It sounds good anyway when I spin it. So I'm gonna put this one in there. I already had a gasket. Okay, I gotta remove this water pump. <clears throat> 12 millimeter, two tens, <clears throat> twelve, ten. 10 and a 12 down the bottom. <clears throat> the 12s are the ones that go in through into the block <clears throat> and the 10s just to the housing. Okay, I removed all the bolts except for this one. I left it just, backed it off just a little bit and I wedged the screwdriver in here and popped it free. I figured if I left that bolt in there I'd be less likely to pop this loose from the block because there's an o-ring back there. I didn't want to disturb that. Well, just in case you do have to uh, replace the o-ring, after you remove the water pump, you'll have to get this thing off, which <coughs> all it would be holding it would be this hose to the radiator and these two 10 millimeters back here and then you could pop it off and plus where this taps in. And then behind here where this attaches to the block is where that O-ring goes. There's a little recess in the block. And that's the part number that I got. Yeah. Now the fun part is scraping off all the gasket material time consuming pain in you know what well it wasn't as bad as I thought I used a just a real sharp chisel and carefully went around it scraped all the old gasket off when I put the new gasket on I'm going to use a non-hardening gasket compound both sides of the gasket okay I put the gasket on with some non-hardening gasket compound Smeared some non-hardening on this. And get it installed. Okay, I installed the water pump. Tightened the bolts. I put in the three 12 millimeters first. There's one here, here, and down the bottom. Tighten those down. Snugged them up pretty good. Then I put the the four tens on. Tighten those down. <clears throat> I figure since these go into the block, it's best to tighten those down first and get them tight. 
All right, next step, I guess, is to put the timing belts and everything back on. That plastic shroud goes on next. There's just two bolts on the bottom is all you put on for now. Then you can put the harmonic balancer on the bolt. You got to tighten that thing pretty tight. I usually just take my torque electric torque wrench and run it until it doesn't run anymore. Gets it pretty tight. And don't forget to tighten this down pretty snug. And don't forget to tighten the tensioner. I usually push on this just a little bit. I make sure this side's snug first. And then push it over just a little as I tighten it down. And also put these four bolts in and put this pulley back on for the power steering pump. I tighten that down with my electric torque wrench maxed it out. When I put the cover shroud on, don't forget to put the clip on for the wire. Hook this back up and your temperature. Put this pulley back on and then put the belt on and you can use the tension on the belt pushing against the alternator to get these tightened down. And then tighten up the alternator. You got some tight belt. All we gotta do is put the uh, front back together, like the power steering and <coughs> radiator and stuff. Okay, I got the power steering hooked up. It's four, four bolts. You usually have to loosen that one to get the belt on. Push that up out of the way with, with this nut off. You gotta push that up out of the way. Then you can push the pump over enough to get the belt on. You put this one in and push it over and tighten those two down and then there's one on the bottom and one on the back has to be tightened down. All, all 14 millimeters. <coughs> Before you put the water in and the radiator and everything, just a reminder, tighten up the drain plug down here with the block. <coughs> the water doesn't leak out. I'm putting a new radiator in. Don't forget to put the rubber bumpers on the bottom. And transfer that over. This is a uh, copper brass <coughs> radiator. Uh, you can't get them anymore that I'm aware of. I mean you can, but it was 166 bucks. Aluminum ones are only, you get them down as little as 76 bucks. So anyway, I'm gonna put it in this car. And as you set the radiator and you kind of want to pull this fan shroud back away from it so you can drop it in there without bumping the front of the radiator. And now I want to bolt this in, hook the plug back up to it. Then we can put the radiator, finish putting the radiator in. I, have a hard, I always have a hard time getting that bolt in back there. So I just bend this up out of the way so I can get my hand in there and get started and just bend it back into place. All as far as holding the grill anyway. Don't forget to plug the plug back in for the fan. This fan should only run <clears throat> when you're sitting at idle at stoplights or something too long. It'll kick in and run. It shouldn't, it really doesn't do much for cooling the motor except for when you're sitting still and idling. When you're cruising down the road, it's just a direct airflow through the radiator that, that cools the car. Something I forgot to mention is make sure you have the radiator straight up and down before you tighten the, down the fan. Otherwise, uh, if the radiator is leaning that way a little bit, it'll get wedged up down there at the bottom. So hold it straight up and down while you're getting these tightened up and you'll be all right. All right looks like I just got to hook up some hoses. Okay, I hooked up the top radiator hose. Hook this back up. I just got to get the bottom one and hook the plug back up. Okay, I got the radiator in, filled it with fluid. Filled the coolant reservoir half full. I think I'm ready to go. I wiped down everything underneath, so if I have any oil leaks, I can track them down or make sure this was a success. And also keep an eye out for water leaks. <coughs> This is a 
water pump that came out of a another car I was working on. It looked like it was almost new. It was so shiny and stuff. So it felt good and sounded good. I think she's ready to start up. Well, it started up immediately. Uh, I know I didn't get the timing screwed up. Let it idle here for a while. See if anything starts leaking, water in particular. Take it for a test drive. Okay, I let her idle so it's almost warmed up. And I'll shine a flashlight down in there. I don't see any water leaking out of that water pump, so I guess I'm good to go. Idol's real nice. 